Professor Dave again, let's continue our discussion of quantization. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We are now moving through the initial discoveries that brought about modern physics. Planck set things into motion in 1901, and the man who was to carry the torch next was none other than Albert Einstein. In 1905, while working as a patent clerk in Switzerland, he published three seminal papers that revolutionized physics. These were about Brownian motion, special relativity, which we will get to later, and the photoelectric effect. The last of these, just like Planck's work, also made use of quantization, which cemented the concept as more than just a fluke. The photoelectric effect has to do with the way light is able to eject an electron from a piece of metal. Given that this subject matter is also of great concern to chemistry, we have already covered this topic in the general chemistry course. I highly recommend clicking on the card you see now to view this in-depth analysis of the photoelectric effect, as it is a crucial step in modern physics. If you have familiarized yourself with this concept, we will simply recall that Einstein's work showed that only light above a certain frequency could eject an electron, regardless of the intensity of the beam. And for this reason, he proposed that light was comprised of individual quanta called photons, whereby it was an individual photon of sufficient energy, equal to h times f, that was able to eject an electron. This meant a number of things. First, it wasn't just the vibrational energy of the atoms in the black body that was quantized. Light is also quantized, since photons are quanta. So quantization seemed to be here to stay. But furthermore, since it had already been well established that certain light-related phenomena, like diffraction and interference patterns, are best explained using a wave model, it must be the case that light can be described as both a particle and a wave. This bizarre concept is called wave-particle duality. And though it is essentially impossible to visualize how something can be both a particle and a wave, this is the kind of quantum weirdness we are going to have to get used to if we are to learn modern physics. In order to grasp the material moving forward, we must let go of our sense experience and its suggestions of what waves and particles must be, things like ocean waves and baseballs, and realize that in the realm of the submicroscopic, these notions simply do not apply. Moving on from Einstein, Niels Bohr showed that quantization of energy also applies to the energy of an electron in a hydrogen atom. Bohr proposed that the electron can only inhabit specific energy levels, and that it will move between these energy levels when absorbing or emitting a photon of an energy that is equivalent to the difference in energy between the two energy levels involved in the transition. This model was able to explain the emission spectrum of hydrogen and other elements, and by extension, the color of every object that reflects light. More information on the Bohr model can be found in the general chemistry series, or by clicking on the card you see right now. After this, de Broglie demonstrated that it is not just light that exhibits wave-particle duality, but particles of matter as well. This meant that the electron, just like any other particle, has a wavelength that depends on its momentum, which complicated matters for chemistry quite a bit. This notion was soon corroborated when a beam of electrons was shown to exhibit a diffraction pattern, just like a beam of light does. This meant there was no turning back. Waves can act like particles, and particles can act like waves, whether we are talking about light or matter. Because Newtonian mechanics is unable to fully describe this kind of behavior, we had to develop an entirely new field to do so, and that field is called quantum mechanics. This and the figures that contributed to its development will be the focus of the next few tutorials. Once again, tutorials 12 through 14 from the general chemistry course cover the photoelectric effect, the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, wave-particle duality, and some basic quantum terminology in greater detail than we have mentioned here. 
so it is highly suggested that you take a moment to review these materials before proceeding with the modern physics course. If you are good to go, let's move on to some new concepts. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, support me on Patreon so I can keep making content, and as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.